them talking from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Hanky Show. Attention advertisers, you too can reach this prime demographic. <laughs> Here he is. Tom Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show on Friday with wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. Anything you think we should have talked about this week? Maybe there's something we did talk about and you couldn't get through on the phone? Call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. As long as you're absolutely... Fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. DJ D'Amelio, our bouncer, has, uh, well, he's done more than bounce callers. The guy's got a um, criminal record. And uh, he did not choke up when he swung the Louisville Slugger. I want to tell you right now, he swung for the fences. I'm ready to rock. Batted a thousand on somebody's head, and uh, that, was, uh, that was the beginning of his criminal career. You, and people think I'm making this up, which is, that's the funniest part of this. They think I'm making it up. Like, they think I'm just, like, uh, you know, just uh, telling some stupid story. Uh, but the reality is, if you check the criminal record, you will find him. It's absolutely true. Anyway, all you have to do is uh, call our toll-free telephone number, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And um, once again, also, uh, my best wishes uh, to uh, Mr. Marty Ingalls, now 68 years and one week old. That's 68 years and a week. And I want to, uh, again, issue my challenge to the television networks to, to find employment for a man of his talent. Age discrimination is a very real thing, and I'm just amazed... That a man, uh, the, the man who starred in I'm Dickens, He's Fenster, is not in a primetime sitcom on a network. It, it's a tragedy. You see how Hollywood is. Once a guy is 68 years old, like Marty Ingalls, these guys can't find work. And I, I think it's a tragedy, a shame, a travesty. It's outrageous. Anyway, our toll-free telephone number, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. John on the Tom Likas Show. Adam. Hey, Tom. John. First-time caller, long-time listener. Thank you. Um, going back to your AM days, you are the man. I just can't get enough of you. Uh, but you were, you were touching on the thing with the soccer players. I was wondering what you felt about uh, race car drivers. Uh, well, uh, about the drivers themselves? Yeah, do you consider that as far as, you know, another uh, pussy sport? I don't know. Well, put it this way. Uh, the, these guys are not athletes, if that's what you're asking me. Okay, um, okay, I can see that. I mean, uh, they're taking a wild risk. I'll certainly say that if I had to compare the risk level of a race car driver, a NASCAR driver, to a, a soccer player, uh, there's an exponential difference between the two. Okay. Um and I will say also that uh, even though I'm not a NASCAR fan, that uh, the television ratings uh, bear out what I say again, that uh, uh, NASCAR racing is hundreds of times more popular in this country than soccer. There's just no two ways about it. Oh, yeah. No. NASCAR racing is, is more popular than my favorite sport, hockey, and I'm well aware of it. Oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm also a big hockey fan, Detroit Red Wings. Uh-huh. Well, the, the Red Wings fans are the only hockey fans who remain Red Wings fans no matter where they move. Oh, yeah. And, and as you know, uh, so many people have left Detroit over the years, but they remain Red Wings fans. That's the one it's one piece of Detroit they took with them when they went. Oh, yeah. My father left there when he was five, and he brought that out here to California, and that's how me and my sister were raised. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm more, more or less, I'm not really a NASCAR fan. I'm more into the, the uh, Grand Prix and uh, uh, cart, you know, the windy track cars yeah i'm not so big on the the big left hand turn all the way around the track that's why you know 
that one I don't really have a I don't consider a lot goes into NASCAR, right. but I do see how popular it has become. No, it's uh, very, very, very popular. In fact, when I go up to uh, when I go up to Sonoma and Napa to do a little uh, wine tasting, mm -hmm. uh, there is a track up there. It's called uh, Sears 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 Raceway, I believe. Okay. It's Sears, and that's a NASCAR track and. Uh, uh, many times, if I don't realize I've got a big race going on, I'm sitting behind 70,000 cars waiting to get into the parking lot there. Oh, yeah, I know. It's it's ridiculous. Huge. I'm, a, I'm out here by Fontana Speedway, and it's it kills traffic for miles around. Yeah. Yeah, well, Fontana's happy to have traffic. Uh, after many years of being the <laughs> aluminum can capital of the world, they're very happy to have it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to know what you thought about that, and I, I thank you for your time. John, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Courtney on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Courtney. What do you think about the chicken Wisconsin? The chicken Wisconsin is the a-ho of the week, there's no doubt about it. Uh, her name is Audrey Seiler, and this is the chick who uh, said she'd been uh, kidnapped. Right. And now uh, the police say that they... Uh, <laughs> they, well, first of all, she said to the police, apparently, the man who abducted her used a knife, duct tape, rope, cold medicine, and other items against her. That she bought at a store. They found her on a surveillance tape at a store buying all the items that the kidnapper supposedly used. <laughs> they also found out that while she was quote-unquote missing, she had, uh, or somebody had logged on and used her computer. It was her. Yeah. Well, they've stopped looking for her abductor, thank God. What do you think she was doing? Looking for attention, like so many chicks. Uh, this is obviously one of the um, major attention horror stories of the year. Not getting enough attention, apparently. Obviously not. Yes. That's all I want. Can you take me out um, bong hit style? But I want the thank you, Jesus. That's all me. right. Here you go, Courtney. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Bill. Uh, uh, first time caller, long time listener. Man, you should preach the gospel to the whole world. You're just awesome for men. I'm the Doctor uh, Gene Scott of men. Oh God, you know you. Now I cry for you. Forget Forrest Gump. I cry for you. <laughs> <laughs> I cry for you. And soccer sucks. Yeah, oh, please. Okay. Uh, you know, that, 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 as I always said, if the INS ever wants to find all the people who don't have green cards, stand outside of any stadium where there's a soccer game going on inside, and then arrest everybody who comes out. <laughs> Don, stop, okay. stop worrying about patrolling the border. Please, just go to any soccer game. No kidding, no kidding. All right, Tom, here it is. All right, we got these liberated women. For the Hooters thing in West Covina, I don't understand that. How do you go to an interview where you know the only interview you're ever going to go to where you don't wear underwear is a strip club? I don't understand why they're crying on TV. What's your opinion on this? Well, first of all, let's tell the whole story. I mean, there are these girls. I guess they're suing, right? They're suing? Yes. They, they claim they were videotaped secretly while they were changing yes. uh, at Hooters. But I don't understand how you you know anybody in the world... And say, okay, I'm going to go to a place without underwear unless you're going to strip. Well, and and uh, see, that's like all these upskirt stories. You know the uh, you know the upskirt stories. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know when these guys like go to the mall and they uh, they just stand there with little cameras and they stand at the bottom of escalators. <laughs> Yeah. And they take yeah. these chicks and they got no panties on and they and then these women claim that their privacy's been violated. Yeah, how about you cover it up? <laughs> you put a little fabric over that thing, huh? What are you doing? <laughs> I totally understand that. Hey, these totally... women walk around, uh, the, you know, uh, with with, with the, the, everything hanging out, and then they worry when people want to look at it. Yeah, I, exactly. They're advertising. Yeah. You want to look at the billboard. Yeah. <laughs> so these these five women filed a lawsuit against Hooters. Yeah. And uh, they say they were secretly videotaped. Yeah. They were asked to step into a trailer at the back of the restaurant on Garvey Avenue and in West Covina. And the yeah. police police say that more than 80 women were recorded. Whoa. Oh. So, I just thought it was a few. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. Well, well, I don't know. I don't know. Look, that's what the police say. I don't know what the deal is. I'm sure it'll all come out in court. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No doubt about it. 
All right, Tom, can you just uh, blow me up? Of course I can, Bill. Here you go. Down like this. one 800 5 Tom. I don't like you. Why not? Because I'm listening to you. The Tom Likens Show. On 97.1, the West Side's FM talk station. The Tom Likens Show at one 800 5 tom We are just one week away from Flash Friday. It begins next Friday, April 9th. On a freeway, highway, or boulevard near you. Next Friday, we will have daylight savings time again. Uh, your headlights will be on one week from today. Get ready. Start making your signs. Start putting stickers on your car. Start doing what you have to do. Cooper, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Cooper Hefner. Um, I've talked to you before, and I just wanted to know why you think that soccer players um, are pussies. Uh, because soccer is a sport that has absolutely uh, no physical contact at all. Well, don't you think that when you run or any athletic sport is good? Oh, I'm not saying it's not good exercise for the people involved. I'm sure it's very good exercise for them. But most Americans don't like watching other people play soccer. Oh. This is why so many kids like to play soccer. But then when, when they have a soccer match at a stadium and people have to pay to go see it, very few people want to go look at it. Have you ever gone to watch a game like somebody bought a ticket and you sat in a seat? No, I'm no. not very into soccer. Well, yeah, well, see, because you're an American. And most Americans are not very into soccer. I'm sure the people playing soccer are getting a lot of good exercise, running around for 90 minutes. Yeah. But I don't know too many people who want to pay to watch it. Well, what do you think about basketball? I love basketball. I'm a big NBA fan. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who do you think is going to uh, win the NBA championship this year? Um. Well, I'm not sure. I Hopefully the Lakers again. Yeah. Well, the Lakers uh, won last night against the Houston Rockets. They uh, wiped them. And uh, now they are tied for number one in the Western Conference with the Sacramento Kings. have lost, what, seven in a row? Yeah. And uh, so now we're tied for first place. We could get uh, home court advantage for the whole playoffs. This could be a very yeah. exciting time to live in L.A., huh? Yeah. yeah. I also heard that you're a really big hockey fan. Big hockey fan. Um, yeah, I really like hockey also. So. Really? Uh, who's your team? Um, I, well, the Kings have never won, like, a championship game, but I like the Vancouver Canucks. You like the Vancouver Canucks? Have you ever gone to see them in person? Um, yes. Uh, are you here or in Vancouver? Um, both. Really? Yeah. Have you met any of the players? Um, yeah. Yeah, I have. Really? Which one? Well, I've met all of them because they've had tours at the mansion. Oh, okay. Cooper's dad is uh, Hugh Hefter, and uh, he's calling in from the Playboy Mansion. Yeah. And uh, so that's really, oh, my God, that's great. The, the Vancouver Canucks came over and took a tour. That's cool. I, yeah, I also have an awesome mom. Uh, I've heard all about your mom. I've never met your mom, but uh, that's what I've heard. Yeah, she's really cool. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, so, you know, we we met uh, Cooper and I met when I was at the mansion. Yeah. And uh, but I I understand that you listen almost every day. Yeah, me and my mom and my son Austin listen. Totally cool. Well, Cooper, you can call in here anytime. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. There he goes. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's you have to son. And he's a 101 student. Love that. Let's say hi here to a Star on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Star. That How can't are you? be Star. That can't be your real name. Are you a dancer? No, I'm not a dancer. That's mm -hmm. my real name. Were you a it's... come on? Your mom was a dancer. Then come on. No, my name is Estrella. It's Spanish for star. So. I oh, your name is Estrella. Okay. Yeah, I just go I for, it means star, so might as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, nobody nobody speaks Spanish here anyway, right? Exactly. In L.A? Yeah, nobody <laughs> understands. I'm Mexican. I don't even speak Spanish. You're Mexican and you don't even speak Spanish. Exactly. <laughs> um, I actually, I just had a comment on what that guy said before he called in regarding the West Covina Hooters yeah. scandal. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to let him know that, you know, he shouldn't be saying stuff if he doesn't even know the story. I was actually one of the girls who was filmed and... um. 
you know, what I'm going through right now, and I'm sure what all the other girls are going through, you know, we feel real dirty and used and ashamed. And, yeah, you know, we're working at Hooters. You know, we know what we're going to wear. I mean, yeah. you know, we sign up for that. But for this guy to just go behind Hooters Corporation, back, you know, their back and, and make us try the uniform on when that's not even part of their hiring process, yeah, I, I understand. And you're, are you uh, in this lawsuit that's going on here? Um, I am not with Gloria Allred. I, I don't want, I don't want my whole name to be out there. I don't want my face to be out there because I don't need attention that way. Now, how did you figure out you were being videotaped? Well, it was. I guess we've heard it on the radio. You know, it was brought up. Some girls were on news about it, and. Yeah. We, you know, it came to our minds and we're, we were thinking about it and stuff. And then uh, I think it was two weeks ago, I got a call from a detective and he said he wanted to meet with me and actually... Did he ask you to take your clothes off? I, well, yeah, I had, a cha I had to change into the uniform. No, I meant the detective. The detective? Yeah. Did he what? Did he ask you to take your clothes off? Oh, God, no. Okay. <laughs> you never know. Sometimes try people try to take advantage. Oh, no, no, no. Thank oh. God he wasn't. Like, I need to match the body with this picture. Is this you? Take off your clothes. Yes, I need to see if that was you on the videotape. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I just... All right, now... Okay. Um, yeah, I just... I don't think it's fair that people should be saying stuff when they don't even know the whole story or what's going on. So I just... I want everybody to be clear on where this is, and we're not a bunch of crying babies. I mean... You know, we know we're going to work at Hooters. We agree to wear the tank top and the little shorts. But, I mean, never, you know, have any of us wanted to be filmed while changing. Hooters girls gone wild. Exactly. That's what it's turned into. It's bizarre. Wow. wow. I just want everybody to be clear on that, and I just want to say hi to you, Tom. Well, you can call me any time, Star. Thank you. Thank you for the call. There she goes. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hi to Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I'd like to say have you ever, but I'll go with the last 10 panhandlers that have hit you up. Have yeah. any of them been in anything other than black or white guys or girls? Uh, no, it's a very good question, and uh, my answer is no. Also, have you ever seen a bald homeless guy? Ever seen a what? A homeless guy who's bald. Um, no, I no. haven't. Ever noticed that? Yeah, that's true. They're, they're, they've always got a nice full head of hair. I just, I, I don't see Asians out there begging. I don't see Hispanics out there begging and holding the signs, you know, homeless, please help. Yeah. I don't see any of them. It's just, and I drive to L.A., I drive Westminster, uh, Little Saigon. You never see an Asian. This is one of these wonderful politically incorrect questions that I love. Why are all the homeless people white and black? I don't know. It just it, maybe their families don't take care of them. I work for a. How come you don't see any Cambodians out there? Yeah, I mean, I work for a landscape company. These guys live four people to a room. They manage to make it happen, and they're not out there with the signs. I just I don't know. Maybe it's a a thing where our families just don't care about the our room family members, or maybe these guys have figured out how to make more money than me, and I have a real job. I don't know. I don't know what it is. That's a good question. I don't know the answer. Well, what am I, an anthropologist, for Christ's sake? Please. Just a moron with a microphone. It's wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our number. The Tom Likas. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, 1-800-5800-TOM. One week ahead of the... 2004 edition of Flash Friday begins next Friday, April 9th. And on Friday, April 16th, we will be at Barracuda in downtown Portland, Oregon, baby. Uh, we haven't done a live performance in a long time. Uh, it's time to get back out there. What's it been? Uh, about six weeks, seven weeks? No, it's been a while. Valentine's Day or so was the last time we did something. And that's the only appearance we've made this year, if I recall correctly. So, um... We're coming back to Portland, Oregon for the first time since 1999. For God's sake, I was married in 1990. That's how long ago it was. Anyway, it's Barracuda, 9 Northwest 2nd Avenue in downtown Portland. For details, stay tuned to Max 910 Talk Radio for guys. Uh, they're having contests so you can win tickets. But um, if you're a Portland 9 or a 10, we're not being unrealistic, girls. 
We know there's a lot of hairy pits and chicks who don't shave their legs. So, you know, we have to grade on a bell curve, of course. Uh, but if you're a Portland 9 or a 10, uh, you don't even have to be an L.A. 9 or a 10, just a Portland 9 or a 10, send a picture of yourself to us, and uh, we will get you on the uh, guest list and get you in the back door. Just write to me at Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. I'll send that along to Gary, and uh, Gary will be the sole judge of who goes on that guest list. You don't have to win tickets if you're a hot chick. We'd like to see how many hot chicks are in Portland, for God's sake. So uh, send that in. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Stephen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Stephen. How you doing, buddy? Do you care, Stephen? I do, Tom. I'm doing I've great. I've been for the last three years. I've been up in Medford, Oregon. Oh, boy. Out of Southern California. I'm in Ventura now, and it's good to hear your voice again. Oh, thanks for coming home. <laughs> About soccer, Tom. The only reason soccer was invented is so uh, Latinos can be good at something besides picking strawberries. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm not going to touch that. Are you kidding me? Please, please. But the real reason I called... Don't Tom, even. Don't. The real reason I called, Tom, uh, I was, you know, looking over my girlfriend's shoulder the other night, and she was reading an article out of one of those women's magazines, Glamour, Cosmo, I don't know. Right. It's about women who want to keep their... Uh, Maiden name when they get married. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm reading over her shoulder and I'm saying, that's ridiculous. And she says, what's ridiculous? I'm going to keep my name when I get married. And oh boy, Tom, I hit the ceiling. No, oh, no need to hit the ceiling. You tell her she can keep her last name as long as she likes because uh, you're not going to marry. <laughs> that's exactly what I said. It's very simple. She can keep her last name. Absolutely. I, I said, why, why even bother getting married? Oh, so, so she can get your ATM card. That's why she wants to marry. <laughs> Probably. With her last name on it. I know. What, how do I talk her into that? Oh, I mean... You, you don't talk her into anything. You tell her that the woman you marry will have your last name. It's that simple, so the two of you don't have to get married. Okay. I mean, it's that simple. Okay. And, if, hey, by the way, do you really want to marry a woman who wants to keep her own last name? Uh, I'm, I've been with a woman for three years now, and I'm, I love her to death, but... That, like, made me question everything. Yeah, and, and well, it should. Yeah. You know what? You're, are your kids going to have hyphenated names? Yeah, that, that's exactly what I told her. I'm like, what name will our kids have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wait well, till she uh, asks you to take her last name. That'll be the next step. You know, you, you know what? She actually, said, she actually said that. I'm telling you. Kind of in jest, but, you know, at the same time, kind of like eyeing me to see if I would actually maybe do it. I'm yeah. like, Oh, you're cr crazy. Woman. Well, this is a great way to avoid getting married. Is simply you tell her that you, your, you, here's how you're going to keep your last day. Keep it forever. <laughs> and I'll keep mine. All right, Tom. Thanks for your advice. It's, it's good to hear you again. Stephen, thank you. Good to hear from you. It's uh, Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Oh, hi, Chris. Hey, uh, I was just kind of curious. What's your uh, take on the whole Lakers thing? What whole Lakers thing? How uh, how do you think they're going to be looking once uh, playoff time comes? Well, the Lakers are peaking at exactly the right time. Are you kidding? Look at all these games they've won in a row. Yeah, I don't know. I was watching. I was watching that game uh, game the other night. On, were, uh, last night on TNT, you mean? Yeah, and I, I mean, Yao had a horrible game, and, and Yao then, had a horrible game because uh, Shaq got in his face and learned how to play Yao. Got in his face, definitely. Shaq definitely got in his face. But what's going to happen when somebody like a Kevin Garnett or a Tim Duncan takes Shaq out on the wing? Well, again, uh, you know what? Uh, the the uh, first of all, Kevin Garnett's never won anything. Let's start with that. A. Very true. Very true. Buddy. And B. Uh, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan's. Uh, Tim Duncan's won twice. Okay. And Shaq's won very three true. times. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, Tim Duncan gets all the credit in the world because I think he plays with as little talent as possible and, and has won two rings. Now, granted, David Robertson can, can be put in there, but David Robinson was at the end of his career for both of those rings. Well, you know, they've got that Manu Ginobili who is, uh, you know. Oh, man. man who was nice. He had 29 the other night, the yeah. last night. No, I mean, he's, he, 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 I, I think he's a bigger problem for the Lakers than Tim Duncan, frankly. Well, but man who, get, man who Ginobili gets in Kobe's head if you watched uh, – Last year, yeah. Manu was getting in Kobe's head all over the place. But the thing is that Shaq and Kobe look like they have no physical problems right now at all. Oh, I, mean, they, question, I, mean, I mean, last I year, I, I was at the finals, uh, the, the, you know, that, the conference finals with the San Antonio and the Lakers last year. I was there. 
Oh, you were there with Gene as well. I was there the final game when San Antonio won it. Oh, really? Oh, and, and I'm telling you that, uh, I've, you know, last year uh, we had a different uh, Shaquille O'Neal out there, one who was not uh, playing 100%. Plus he still had his heel for his toe problem, wasn't it? At that time? That's what I'm saying. You know, you're, last night on TNT, you saw the Shaquille O'Neal that we know here in Los Angeles when he's not hurt. Uh, now, even though he did not score a lot of points and he didn't put up a lot of numbers, he was a major physical presence in that game. Essentially, he and Yao Ming canceled each other out, but uh, the, the Shaq got the better of Yao Ming last night. Oh, Shaq, Shaq proved that he was the most dominant player in league history. It's no doubt about it. I, I hate on the Lakers all the time because I'm not a Kobe fan at all. I think there's three or four. I mean, my philosophy is before, obviously, they got the other two Hall of Famers, that, that any two guard that can play somewhat decent man up D and can hit an open jumper from after double and triple teams on Shaq could have, could have been easily as, uh, as productive in that system because, I mean, realistically, I think Kobe needs Shaq a hell of a lot more than Shaq needs Kobe. I mean, Shaq being the most dominant force ever. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, uh, yeah, I, mean I really do. I mean, the Lakers, uh, yeah, and believe me, the Lakers get bored. That's why the Lakers start the season hot oh, and the season hot. And in the middle, they kind of flail around. Uh, the, they, they have little nagging injuries. They become big nagging injuries and what have you. But uh, look yeah, at them now. The now, Lakers look like uh, they said this on TNT last night, and it's hard to disagree. The Lakers look like they're not going to lose another game this year. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd have to say. I mean, eight or nine to go. I mean, that's that's a, a very conceivable thing to say. But and the other thing I wanted well, to well, eight or nine plus the playoffs. I mean, you keep in mind, a couple of years ago, the Lakers, the Lakers lost one game in the playoffs a couple of years ago. <laughs> one game. They went like twelve and one, or yeah, I remember that. Sixteen and one. Was it that many? It was fifteen and one because the first round was uh, three out of five. That's right. Three yeah. out of five. That's so it was fifteen and one in the playoffs, or uh, fourteen and one the total of yeah, you know, it was fifteen and one. Yeah, I mean, either way, they've got, they've definitely, I mean, anytime you put four Hall of Famers on the, you know, the court at the same time, you definitely have a chance to go Well, it depends. If you put Bob Cousy and George Mikan out there, I, I don't know if it would be the same deal. But uh, yeah. hang on a second, Chris. Hold on. Uh, uh, Horacio, uh, you're on the Tom Likas show. What do you want to say to Chris? Hello, Tom. Hello, Horacio. How are you doing, man? Okay. okay. I'm a long time ago. Uh, I just want to agree with you. You know, the Lakers are the most dominant team out there right now. Uh, Shaq is the man. I don't know if you can even want to compare with him with uh, Duncan because uh, Duncan is the most slowest player I've ever seen. I mean, he's so boring. I don't, well, I don't even know what he's doing. The, out guys, there. the guy's been the MVP more than once. He's done something right, and San Antonio's won two championships. Duncan is, is the most dominant, boring player you'll ever see in any professional sport. I mean, they, just because he doesn't go out there and dunk on people every night, and look also how many problems has he had. Kobe can be as nice as he wants. You know, Shaq can be as nice as he wants. All these guys can be as flashy and whatnot as they want. Look at Allen Iverson. Everybody loves Allen Iverson. Before LeBron got here, Allen Iverson had the most jersey sales throughout the country. But now he's got problems. He's battling with Chris Ford. He's he's always had uh, uh, problems with the law. I mean, just because Tim Duncan keeps his nose clean and lives down there in San Antonio, Texas, I mean, the guy is does, does it on the field. I mean, two-time reigning MVP. He should have had a third there. I mean, you can't argue with numbers. Oh, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's about all the sports talk I can take for one evening. But uh, thank you both, boys. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. God, talking to you is like talking to Mickey Mantle. This is the best, Tom. The Tom Likas Show. On 97.1, the Valley's FM talk station. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones, anything goes here, anything at all. Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's he doing? Doing okay, Brian. Hey, I was watching the news the other night, and uh, I only caught a little piece of it. Something about uh, Mexico. They're starting this organization to help, uh, I guess it's to aid the uh, the illegal border hoppers to get them over here across the uh, the border by giving them, like, food, water, blankets. To help save in the nighttime. I was wondering if you picked up on any of that. Or well, it's not the first time people have tried to do that. Uh, there have been many uh, groups and individuals who've done that over the years. Oh, really? Sure. Well, the way the uh, the news made it sound is that the actual government, uh, the Mexico Mexican government, started this organization. Oh, well, that's a different story. Uh, there have been groups here in the United States that have done this, and uh, as far as um, uh, the Mexican government, the Mexican government's doing all kinds of things. Uh, to try to make it easy for uh, illegals here to vote back home, uh, to make it easier for them to send money back home, 
um, and uh, to encourage them to come here to work because uh, the economy in Mexico is sluggish. But what about like the American government and the Mexican government? I mean, they don't they don't clash on something like that, or I mean... no? And I'll tell you why. Because Republicans love to say they hate illegal aliens. Uh, but uh, companies love illegal aliens. Hotel uh, chains love illegal aliens. Uh, uh, when's the last time you had a housekeeper who spoke English at your hotel, for example? Um, uh, fruit companies love illegal aliens. And these are the companies, these big companies, the ones that support conservatives. So they love to go on TV and rant and rave about how terrible it is, all these illegals. But in reality, they love illegals because they provide cheap labor. Did you know that? I mean, I mean, it, it's it's kind of like yeah, I did know that, but I would have thought. That well, that's why that's why the governments don't don't clash. Oh. Wow. Okay. I mean, I, mean, I was just wondering a little bit more info on that. You know, for the most part. Yeah. Well, again, big companies want cheap labor. Illegal aliens work cheap. But I mean, then how come if it's that like that? I mean, if the Mexican government wants to help them get across the border. Why don't they, uh, I mean, like help with the work visas? I mean, all that. I don't, I don't know how a work visa actually goes. Well, the, the fact you know, is, there's a limited number of people who can get a work visa in the United States. We limit immigration on the books. There's a limited number of people who are allowed in in a year. We don't have a guest labor program like they have in Europe, let's say. Do you know that in Europe they have a, you know, of course, you've got the, uh, uh, you've got the common market in Europe. You know, they've got guest labor programs where you can go from one country to another and work for the summer or work for a season or work for a year. Which is kind of like what, what they do here, like you were saying, with a minimum amount of Mexican uh, people to come across and work. Or We don't really have a program like that here. Uh, we, people come in and they do it at their own risk and they're doing it illegally. But in reality, uh, the conservatives don't want to do anything about it. Okay. Because, uh, you know, uh, you start telling the hotel chains they can't have cheap labor to come in and clean the rooms. You start telling uh, the big fruit companies, the big canners, the big farmers and what have you, that they can't get illegals to come in and pick fruit. Well, okay, kind of a little bit off the question what I just asked. Like, okay, the big hotel chains, they hire the illegal, you know, immigrants to come over and work. How do they put that pass through, like... Uh, like paying taxes, I mean... Well, yeah. I think what happens, and I, I don't know specifically, but my guess is that uh, they do what Walmart is alleged to have done. Walmart, remember the big controversy about Walmart? They said Walmart had illegal aliens working there. Well, the way that happens is that uh, uh, allegedly Walmart did not hire any illegal aliens. Allegedly, they hired an outside company, like a cleaning company. And that company allegedly hired illegal aliens. Walmart said, hey, we don't know anything about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. See? Okay. I got gotcha. you. And I'm telling you, I'm sitting here in Los Angeles right now, and there's a lot of people who have a maid at their house who doesn't speak English. And they're paying an agency to send that woman over there. And do they ever check to see if that woman has a green card? In fact, they can get their house clean for 30 bucks instead of 100 bucks. Do people ever question it? No. Okay. All right. right. How many people out there right now are at work coming home from work and they've got a nanny from Colombia or Venezuela or El Salvador? What happens to the person who, so to say, owns that nanny or whatever, and if they ever get caught for being, you know, an illegal immigrant, you know, what would, I mean, would it, would it ever come back to the actual person who has, that person working for well uh, it, uh, technically uh, it, it, it's supposed to yes you may recall the former governor of california pete wilson had a maid who was an illegal alien he's whoa this was the governor oh, okay right on well i guess that's really all i had to ask you tom so uh thanks and can you just blow me up here you go brian I perform a service. I read the newspaper for you. Then you can ask me questions. Dumb like it. 1 800 5800. Tom. Dumb like it. 1 800 5800 866. Where do women spend most of their time? In my wallet. <laughs> 
How about in front of the mirror? Well, that might be the second place they spend most of their time. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs>